This is your buddy. This is your man. This is your Ewok, the and junkie, Jerry himself. How are you guys doing? It's good to see you. Nice to be here. Nice to know you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, enough of me. Enough of me. I, why don't we go ahead and bring in the lovely, the, the wonderful, the luxurious. I don't know why I picked luxurious, but I did. Scotty Jero. Scotty, how you doing, buddy? It is me, the Def Leppard of the Star Wars fandom. Def Leppard, why um, hasn't that stuck yet? We've got to get that stuck. I don't know. We we haven't we haven't we haven't really gone at it. We need to continue to bring it up. But um, come on, Bob, that's up, Jerry. You got to get us, keep us going. Bring on it the, up. Come on, keep it going. So whenever we get a celebration in Anaheim, when we have our panel, we can walk out to photograph, or walk out to animal, <laughs> or walk out to pour some sugar on me, and it makes sense. I think pour it's some gotta make sugar sense. on me. I think pour some sugar on me is the one. So, we should, okay. We should do a cover of it called "Pour Some Star Was On Me." That, that pour awesome. some bomb bat on me, yeah. <laughs> or pour some bomb bat on me. <laughs> we can do it. This is perfect, guys. And look, the dream it, is real. And, and funny enough, when Jerry says that, and he brought up how he's an Ewok, I'm no joke. I'm going to pay for surgery to remove his <laughs> eyelids, and then we'll add his eyelids in post for the year 2011. So I'm. <laughs> Want everyone to realize this is a serious thing that Jerry does have Ewok eyes, and that it's a condition that is unrecognized in most Western cultures. I have to let you know how concerning it is to me that you want to remove my eyelids. So. <laughs> hey, man. I'm glad the good. Ewoks blink. Let's, Having changes. <laughs> woo! Let's let those Ewoks wet their corneas so they don't dry up and fall out of their faces. Let the Ewoks blink. Let let the Ewoks <laughs> moisten their cornea for corn's sake. <laughs> for cornea's sake. Look, look, Jerry, I gotta bring up one thing. What's up, man? Our last episode was... How would you say? Wasn't uh, Star Wars. Wasn't Star Wars, but we got some good responses. Oh, yeah. We got some fantastic responses, and um, oh, I want to hear one thing from you, Jerry, before we move on. Yeah, you got any updates? Got any things you want to fill us in on? Oh, thank you for actually asking about my life. I appreciate it. <laughs> Your Ewok life, living my in little the tree village. Well, you know, we're doing pretty good here in Happy Tree Village, or you know, in Happy Tree. Is it Happy Tree Village? It's the one I live in. Let's see. I'm gonna look it up. I think it is Happy Tree Village. Where does Wicked live? Is Wicked? Are you related to Wicked? No, no. That's see. That's a little. Oh. That's a little uh, speciesist that you think that we're we're this you know <laughs> the same family. So uh, I just made a a very inappropriate remark. I'm sorry. I mean, come on, Scott. I, you gotta you gotta get with the times, man. You know, we aren't all just. You know, we already sang Yub Nub, so we're all good now. <laughs> Yub Nub, uh, Wicked Bright, Bright Tree Village. W- it's Bright Tree Village. Bright Tree Village, that's it. Happy Tree Village, this sounds unbelievable. That's the one I live in. <laughs> <laughs> They're all named something Tree Village. That's how He lives in Cannon Junkie give Tree us, Village. Give us a break. We we live in trees, people. What do you think? We're gonna get like you know, <laughs> Arbor Town, you know? Like what, what do you want from us? Exactly. Yeah. Don't disrespect him. No, Don't no, disrespect Jerry. No for that disrespect. Reason. So Scott, how's your life? <laughs> my life's been pretty good. Look, I'm not even kidding. And if you're listening to this podcast, one of my students, uh, literally, I walked up and I'm like, "All right, good morning, y'all." And I hear, "Hello there." And I'm like, <laughs> "What?" The force is with. And I said, "Did you just, did you just say hello there?" And he goes, "Yeah." And he kind of laughed and kind of like. Kind of like, you know, kind of like, how would you say? Kind of like became a little more reserved. I'm like, did you just quote the prequels? And yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, 
no way and I gave him a high five but that's awesome that's Scott, like one of my favorite memes Scotty I know you should have said General Kenobi I, I, I was so <laughs> taken aback <laughs> I know what no you mean because no kid is like I only have one Star Wars poster in my room it's do or do not there's no try right but for him to kind of I don't know like I've never really I've, I've addressed it like a handful of times but not quite enough for him to like b- pull a meme out of nowhere you know right and I was I was just kind of shocked, but yeah, no, um, I, I got one of those, um, a trailer for my, I don't know if I think I was talking about the trailer last Sunday, but a trailer came out for my, for my newest movie, Owl's Nest, and I'm making it with a couple friends. Um, go check that out. It's on my personal Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, it's, it's called Owl's Nest teaser trailer, if you want to YouTube it. And, um, Seriously. I think that was pretty, yeah, it's. Seriously, go check it done. out, guys. Go check it out because they these guys. I Scott sent me updates, and it is so well done. Um, but seriously, just let me. Sorry, Scott, you got to let me dote upon you. No, thank you. Uh, do, dote away, right? No, um, <laughs> real man. Like the production uh, value is very, very nice on this. So go check this thing out. It looks. It's. It's a. It's a thriller trailer, and it, it like. Yes. feels that you do not know what is going on in there. You know, I, I can't tell who I'm supposed to be afraid of. <laughs> That's kind of I, I'm kind of excited about point, that. Yeah. yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. I love things where it's like, who can I trust? Who can I not trust? Mm hmm. You know, well, thank you for that. No, Jared. I no really problem. appreciate that. I seriously, it's, it's got a be canon fun when junkie, it comes out. It's got a canon junkie stamp of approval. So you guys should be looking forward to Knives <laughs> Out. And you should also be looking forward to Owl's Nest. Owl's Nest, yes. So there you go. Go out and check it out, guys. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no, if you haven't seen it, give it a, give it a watch. Uh, it's got a good bit of views. Oh, one other thing I feel to mention. Um, my, we have our, our trailer reaction video on the Bomb Bad Cast's YouTube page. Yeah. It's got like several. I'm going to look at it now. I'm pretty sure last yesterday I looked at it, it had like 600 views. But um, yeah, no, I'm I'm – that video is doing really well, and we've got you know TRB there in it. Um, we even got our friend we we met at Celebration who happened to get Jerry in the video. So go see our trail reaction live from I, Celebration. It's a really I popped, really fun video. I pop my head into his every now and then. I tried to yes. just get over there like look at me. No, 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 I didn't know he had a camera. Honestly, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I it was one of those moments. I couldn't. Uh, feel what was going on around me because Ray was jumping over a freaking TIE fighter. And and the cool thing is I in my reaction video I had a reaction from where we were and a reaction from where, you know, like in the room with, with when it when it dropped. And uh oh my gosh, it is increased significantly in views since yesterday. Let me see. I have eight hundred and forty seven. Holy cow, man. Wow, man, we're blowing up. That's Holy awesome. Holy Snokes, guys. That is... Holy Snokes. Hey, man. Hey. I've never been a part of a mind, video. <laughs> but bring up something, Jerry. Bring up Holy something. Holy Snokes. Holy oh. Snokes. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny you say that. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, I posted a tweet the other day for awareness uh, that there is a growing problem in, our, in the Walmarts of our of this great nation, <laughs> known as <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, let's we, we, let's, yeah, let's not pander around the great. Anyway, uh, the Walmarts of this of this of this lovely nation uh, in America, at least, are are sadly putting some Snokes on on pegs to to keep them warm. These hey. have no homes. Snokes, these Snokes uh, did not do anything to deserve this. All they did. All they did was try to bridge our minds in order to trick us to come to their boudoirs and and you know become basically their their slaves. But yes, that is no reason to let them sit there and warm a peg and act like nobody no. wants them. So we at the Bombad Cast, Scotty. What do we do? Thing. What are we doing? We are starting uh, the Adopt a Snoke campaign. Yes. Yes. And if you want to adopt a Snoke, there's a few simple steps. Yeah, tell us. You'll that. end tell up us. learning about. Look, here's the deal. You'll end up. We'll end up starting the program in the next week. Um, to where when you write or leave a review on on our iTunes page or any other page for that matter. Um, you 
will have the opportunity to be entered into a some would say a contest. I think it's just a, a good old lottery. Um, uh, I, I think it's a good old fashioned good thing to do, honestly. Good thing to do because you're you're doing it to help promote the Snoke awareness and the 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 fact that these poor lonely Snokes are being abandoned think on shelves these, everywhere. Think of these poor little three and three quarters uh, mangled old old adorable. Uh, it hurts my heart, dude. It hurts my heart. Little little nuggets, <laughs> these little nuggets of, of adorable evil are going it's so to waste. It's so hard to look at. It's the hardest thing. And, and we will, guys, we will not stand idly by. <laughs> we will not stand idly by and let poor Snoke warm up. We will not. No. no we will not. We will not. We will not stand. We won't. We will not. It's okay. Are you going to be so, all right, Scott? Yeah, no, we're just trying to reach out. <laughs> get This is not get laughing. I shouldn't away. laugh at your pain. I'm crying. No, man, this hurts. We we just need to reach out. We need you. We need you to give us reviews. We we need reviews. We need ratings on iTunes. <laughs> because these Snokes, they need a home. And if you know what's good for our community and, and our Star Wars networking you you know you should be doing this this is it's 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 just pure unadulterated uh, in the arms doing the right thing the angel. these some of these snokes are unwashed have not been fed in months <laughs> they are left out in the they're left in they're left in the bargain brand aisle the bargain brand bargain brand the bargain bin and they do you remember cost asunder? But anyway, do you when do you remember when they had all those Jar Jars back in nineteen or maybe the year two thousand? Scotty, don't remind under me. With the same thing. Don't remind me. Don't you dare bring remember. up the great, the great Jar Jar. The great I remember abandonment of of ninety. Hey hey. Ninety nine. Hold it together. And two thousand. Hold it together, you walk. And then every Hold. every year since then. Everyone's been forgetting Jar Jar, but I got news for you guys. Jar Jar ain't going nowhere because if you guys, by the time you're listening to this, by the way, uh, it's, oh yeah, it will have been, uh, I'm trying to say it in Jar Jar speak, but I'm never good at it. Uh, Talk Like Jar Jar Day, International Talk Like Jar Jar Day was yesterday. So yes. hopefully that went good. Hopefully you ran around. Uh, to everyone you know who doesn't like Star Wars even, and like just said, uh, "Ooh, we said Bombad, we uh, we said we said called Jar Jar Binks, and you know whatever you want." So. You saw, you saw, Musa speak like this, sir. Yeah, all day, sir. But to to go back to the the point at hand um, again, don't forget talk like Jar Jar Day uh, was well. Don't, it's we're recording. Sunday, so it's tomorrow, but it's it was yes. If you're listening to this, it was yesterday, so it was yesterday. We'll send out some tweets so you don't forget. Um, no, this is me speaking into the future, but uh, so we we're time traveling. Yes, yes. So so we don't. This is <laughs> the the momentum of the segment we were trying to do. Uh, no, if you or a loved one want to adopt a Snoke, once again, what you must do is find the Bombad cast on Apple Podcasts. Yes. Rate and review. You can rate whatever, I guess, but I prefer five stars. Five star these these snokes demand five star accommodations. Review and love. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, they do. Because I mean, have you seen the man? He wears a gold bathrobe. It looks like it's made of solid gold. Uh, uncomfortable is probably why he's all bent over, honestly. But 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 again Go, go to Apple Podcasts, rate and review the Bombad cast. You know, and if even if you don't get a Snoke, we're, uh, you know, Scotty, I think we're going to try to give a couple of these away. If I, if I, I think so. We're going to try to put a couple of these in some good homes and do our parts and, and do your go and, out, Go out and adopt a Snoke. And this this is entirely up to you, but you can take it out of its little containment, you know. it Sometimes it likes to wander free, or if you feel that it could be placed up somewhere on display, then I'm sure the little Snoke would be okay with that, too. It's It just needs a home. It does. But just don't feed them after midnight. Don't do that. Um, do not do that. We don't... I, 
you know what? That's all we need to say. I don't need to explain any That's further because you guys mm. aren't going to do that. That'll never happen. So okay. no. Yeah, just don't Look, do it. Don't do it ever. Don't. Just know that do not uh, feed them after midnight. I can't. Do not do that. I can't utter that any further. Don't do I it. I can't express that any any. I can't even think of good. It will be your mistake if you did such a thing. Uh, no direct sunlight either. He he burns. <laughs> yes, he's like. Uh, He's like, um, the, uh, dang it, Mother, um, what's her name? Why did I say Mother Tolson? It's not her name. <laughs> what's the woman from Solo making two happen? Oh! Oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, he's like, uh, oh, now I've forgotten because you said, because you forgot. Moloch is the man. Moloch is the man. Moloch is the uh, dude. Lady Proxima. Lady, Lady Proxima. Proxima. And. Solo. <laughs> oh, I love Lady yeah. Proxima. We we saved you from the silo. Does remember the silo, Kira? Not for, don't do it, Kira. Not for Han. He's not. Not for Han. It. He's not worth, <laughs> He's not worth it. it. Okay. Anyway, so we have to we have to move we on. We really do. I'm sorry, but but no. Look, here's the deal. Remember, adopt a Snoke. It's a it's a it's a rate and review program. Um, they need. And also, those of you, if even if you don't get a Snoke, you could get your review read on live. Yes. To take. On the air, so <coughs> and add your Twitter handle at the end of the review. Yes, yes. For the Snokes to know who their future parents. Again, Apple and I- that reason alone. <laughs> Apple Podcasts <laughs> rate and review. Leave your handle, and you may win a. You may win. Uh, excuse me. You may go home with a snow. Win? Hey, this is not. We're not. It's these like, things aren't prizes. It's as close to winning an Oscar as you'll ever get. As to, it's as close as some you will ever come to taking home a tiny gold bald man. So bald, bald man, <laughs> who's who is horrible dysmorphia. It, it's essential. It's essential to that and stuff. And also, don't get him in the sun because I mean, have you seen his face? The man is wrinkled to, to oblivion. He's a yes. He's a raisin that became a smaller raisin. So anyway, yep. on, let's move on. Look, here's the deal. Um, find, find, find what you may, but um, Snoke's need a home anyway. Uh, back to the lecture at hand. Real talk, We've got real talk. one thing we need to discuss, guys. We got some hype coming up. We got some big things coming up. We got some John Hoey bringing the bacon. We got some secrets of the Jedi, and we even yeah. got some episode nine stuff, dude. Next week is going to be wild. Oh I don't think gosh. anyone here listening on Tuesday is prepared for what. What will happen? We are, what will a hundred percent happen? We are literal days away. We're, oh man! So not even like, not that many oh. days away, guys. I think uh, I remember right, Friday. Is does it start Thursday or Friday? It starts Friday, but we the Star Wars panel is Saturday, right. well, and there's but, no live stream for it. I'm warning you now, no live stream right. at all. But but doesn't the Disney Plus stuff, the television, happen? Oh, I don't Friday? know. I don't know. I think we could get some Mandalorian action on uh, Friday. Mando. The man- oh, well, you know, like what we got this past Friday was pretty insane. Yeah. To be honest. Was that Friday or was that Thursday? That was, I believe, I don't know, because I worked uh, Saturday uh, this week, and so Let me see. I have all my days, and I feel like this is Saturday, honestly. Anyway. It's um, Sunday. Actually, it's Tuesday. Jerry, what are we talking about when we bring up our friend John Hoey? Well, our friend John Hoey, you know, broke a little scoop in February, and that scoop February. Yeah, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a scoop about February. a certain uh, Jedi that everyone is dear to everyone's hearts, except for yes, well, except for James uh, of the Resistance broadcast. So you know, <laughs> James Bainey is not not his favorite, but that's okay. We'll just let him. I understand his himself. POV there. Yeah, we can understand, I understand it. that point of view. We can understand it. It's okay, just so wrong. But no, I'm just playing. Resistance trailer dropped Wednesday. Wednesday. It doesn't oh, feel like it was okay. that long ago. It does. It felt like it was yesterday. We had so many things that happened last week. But, oh, man. But John uh, was mentioning a certain Jedi everyone loves, uh, saying that there was a Kenobi series that was pretty much rumor. It was a rumor at the time, but he said it was a really strong rumor. It looked like it Yes. to be happening very soon, or at least that th- we were going to get word of it with the year. And then, you know, fast forward to August here, fast forward to the week before D23, and what do we get? Yeah, literally six months. That's crazy. I didn't think about that. It was quite, wow. it was quite a stretch, a half a year, but still, um, that news 
was amazing. And it was. Fine, and I was so excited for John. And then there was this kind of, I don't know, something that we kind of noticed. John wasn't at first getting a lot of the uh, uh, credit credit that he kind of yeah. do uh, for that discovery. I, I don't know if you watched uh, Jedi Council this week or not. Mm-hmm. I. I still keep up with Jedi Council. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, like right on the edge of that, that right there. But they mm-hmm. did, they mentioned John and stuff. Really? Um, they, That's awesome. They are actually very, uh, they're very, uh, at least, they they have like a rela- a good relationship with Star Wars Newsnet. Good. So they, they've always kind of pulled stories from them and kind of gone back and forth. The, the place to go to. If you don't go there, you're missing out. Yeah, honestly. man. Hey, seriously. You guys out. want to find the good good Star Wars scoops and stuff without it's a place good to go. scoops and rumors without a lot of spoilers. If you want the spoilers, you got to go over and see our buddy making. Ward at mm-hmm. Star Wars. They are also – Making Star Wars is also a very good site. They've been at – On top of it. They've been on top of it since the prequels, man. Yep. But but if you want uh, a little bit of sequel trilogy Disney era love and kind of what's the scuff yep. going around with Star Wars these days, then definitely go check out Star Wars Newsnet. But but you know we had a, a hashtag going around and and shout out to Star Wars Bill, uh, Sheehy. A boy. Yeah, man. Bill Sheehy, baby. He he kind of like made a little meme or something that ha- that said uh, John Ho- or Ho we had it first. Hoey had it first. I, I took agree that. that. I kind of ran with it and said, hey, let's get the Hoey had it first. Hashtag Hoey had it first uh, going. Uh, and it, it went around a little bit, which was pretty cool. But you know what? I think he, I don't know, we we can keep pushing for it. But I think, I think John ended up getting a lot of good uh, kind of credit for it. Maybe not from the actual trades. Yeah. Uh, like Hollywood Reporter and Deadline uh, and Variety. <laughs> Um, Vanity Fair. Yeah, Vanity Fair. Or but, Variety or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, Variety. But, um, hey, that's okay. That's uh, that cool. goes. I can say this. Remember whenever I hung out with John at Celebration, and he, I asked him, like, dude, when do you think they're going to drop the Kenobi news? He goes, probably Phantom Menace. And I said, that would be awesome. And Phantom Menace comes and it goes, and I text him, like, what do you think it's about? You know, why do you think they waited? He goes, I don't know. They might be waiting for something else. But, like, I'm shocked that they're actually going to – I mean, I'm not confirming it. I don't know, but – I would really hope at D23 we actually get the confirmation of it somehow you know, in some way. And I, and I think we will. I well, have a gut feeling we will. You know, when the trades, when when you start hearing it, listen, guys, these guys aren't just, I heard a lot of people throwing around clickbait. These guys aren't clickbait. One yeah. thing, John is, not not click, at all. John is not a clickbait author. John is a reputable nope. uh, uh, writer and journalist. Reputable. Shout out. All of it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to John there. You do a good job, yes. buddy. But uh, we, if you hear it in Variety... Look at look at where this information is coming from, guys. If it's coming from Variety, if it's coming from THR or the Holly, otherwise known as the Hollywood Reporter, or if it's mm-hmm. from Deadline, those are the three big trades. That's they the are. people in the industry kind of go for to get the scuttlebutt of okay, there's rumors. This rumor has foundation to it because it is in these reputable sites, exactly publications. So. This get, don't sleep on this, guys. I think, and they usually say, uh, at least I heard them say on Jedi Council and stuff. I don't know how you feel about Jedi Council now. I I still uh, can can get behind some of what they say. Mm-hmm. I may not agree with all they say, but hey, we all gotta have different opinions. Of course. Uh, they kind of were saying because they're in the industry. They said you hear it in the trades. It's probably that means the news is about to drop. So yes. just don't be surprised. When uh, Ewan McGregor comes out on the stage during the Lucasfilm or or the Di- the Disney Plus streaming panel, you never know. We could get the drop and there. This is a good point to be made um, in regards to like Disney Plus. I mean, I've got family members like I told you before that don't even know it's coming out. They have literally not a single clue that D- that Disney Plus is a thing. Right. They just don't know. So this weekend coming up, you're going to be seeing a lot of trailers probably and it's going to probably have a lot a whole d20 i'm sorry a whole disney plus trailer but also another thing is if they walk out and they have you and mcgregor walk out and announce it it's going to get the fans that you know that loathe the prequels but liked him back on board yes. they're going to be purchasers of it i had i had um my buddy kevin who who enjoys the stars movies he hadn't watched his first weapon until like three years ago and we were had we had dinner together friday night and i'm like dude if they sue this would you buy disney plus because i'd buy it in a heartbeat because i love that character yeah and what ewan mcgregor did with the character so 
they'd be a fool not to announce it now after especially all these huge, you know, huge out, outlets were saying something about it. Oh, so yeah, absolutely. I have a gut feeling. Um, of course, I always thought John was right, but now it's going to be more solidified. And, and it's kind of cool. This is the biggest break in his in his um, his reporting world. And I and I'm uh, hopefully the source is happy, too. And everyone's satisfied that it's coming into fruition now, because I think this is a I think what they're going to do with this show is going to be pretty incredible as well. Well, and also, and, um, also shout out to uh, I'm trying to remember his name is Jordan at Cinelex. What's the name of the what's the name Cinelinx or something? What's the name of that website? For which one? Um, he is a writer for a website too, and he also like he was kind of involved where he had a scoop. He had a scoop as well. Him and John both. I don't know if they had the same source, but they both kind of had it. So shout out to him as well for kind of. Yeah. He he didn't break it as early as John, but still a shout out to him if you're listening. Like, but but seriously, uh, in honor of John Hoey as well, Scott. I believe we. Have to, yes. I believe we need to say uh, hashtag book it. Book it, baby. Book, book it. it. Punch it. Book it. Book it. Book it. Punch it. Book it. All of it. Just whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm, I can't find the name. But uh, if I got it wrong, I apologize. But but, <laughs> but give him a little love, too, because he was also, like, there's a lot of good uh, journalists out there, webs- like guys who are out there getting scoops uh, who don't get the credit they deserve sometimes. And John, I wish, yeah. And, John is and definitely is. one of them. John is, yes. like, John, man, you deserve, like, all the all the props, man. So great, uh, great, great statement, Jerry. I really appreciate that. But um, also, one thing I want to bring up too: we didn't get a chance to bring it up last week because we were talking about Temple of Doom, um, Secrets of the Jedi. Ooh. What? That was a huge drop. Um, we haven't had a chance to riff or discuss it, man. Not what do you all. think of that, man? I tell you what, I need to read the rest of it. I immediately went to StarWars.com and got the of resolution screen. Yes. Ages. Yes. I sent them to you, <laughs> and I was like, honestly, do you, I don't know if you, any of you guys listen to Force Centered. They did like an entire main show discussion. Ooh, on those. I'm not after this. You, you're gonna have to. Man. It's yes, indeed. So good. But that's fantastic. Dude, we could do an entire discussion on those things because I, I oh totally through them. There's so much information. They have information. They. It makes me wonder what's left in the book. It's like, why do I need to buy this? Because it seems like you dropped all the good stuff. Exactly, but they, when did they've uh, got to have something? When is the release date? Isn't December or is it? It's November. Further? It's November. November. It's like wow. the first couple of weeks. It's right before or right around the same time as uh, the Mandalorian dropping. I, I mean, there's just a couple of things in there that I would like to bring up. The fact that they showed Yaddle—that's incredible. Yes, and I feel like Yaddle was the ugly stepchild for a long time, <laughs> but they like had a full full section on Yaddle, well, and, and not just Yaddle, but like. Force uh, was Force Visions. Force I Visions, and they had like that crazy uh, painting of what her Force Vision was behind. Yes. Blast, yes. Blast points, I believe. Got no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm. Gosh, I'm. I Blast points. I think did discuss it a little bit, but you've. But really, seriously, uh, 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 Force Center. Uh, Joseph and Ken really broke that down, man. Like how, like they and they got deep into like what she was seeing. So I won't go ahead and spoil it here, but go listen to that episode for real, guys. It oh, was like, that's awesome. What I can't is, wait. What is that implying, though? It's like, what's your vision? I did not vision? know they did that. It's, oh gosh, it's so good. But I the, the pages that I did read were the things, that it was called the section that starts off uh, the sequel trilogy era talking about The Last Jedi. Yep. And uh, kind of talking about what happened between him and Ben and Snow. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's from the point of view of Luke. If no yes. one, as anyone, if anyone hadn't heard of this before, it's a book about the secrets of the Jedi with the point of view of Luke. So, and I don't know if this is Luke post TLJ or Luke pre TLJ because he's talking about how Ray shows up. I I and think it's kind of just like maybe he was just being to, concurrently yeah. with it, or mm-hmm. we'll we'll have to see, but. That is that's what is most exciting about this book, and this is this is a young reader or a young adult. Yes, uh, but have you just guys go check out the images from this? Maybe we should maybe post the images too sometime. Totally, they are gorgeous. Like it is, it's old. It makes it kind of look like an old manuscript. The pages are yellowed. Uh, yeah, and it's got these beautiful, beautiful paintings and illustrations of Jedi and and they mention. Old Republic, they mention um, Mandalorian Wars, I believe, too, yes. at some point. It's it's kind of cool that they kind of 
give insight into things that, you know, have been discussed in Rebels or Clone Wars or some, you know, the, the saga films. And now to see it, like, written down as told by Luke is... That's going to be a really interesting bo- oh, book. Yeah. And I would love if... I don't think they'd ever do an audio book of a, of a book like this, but if they did and they had Mark Hamill reading it... Oh, Done. That would be such an excellent... It would be such an excellent way to... To capitalize on you know him, Mark uh, Hamill still being around in the less and well they should have like doing like when you open up like one of those greeting cards that says something they should have <laughs> like you open <laughs> it and, and it's just his line from TLJ's like mm-hmm. the ancient Jedi texts or whatever you know like yes. little blurb of him the him. ancient Jedi texts. well what do you what do you think too about that cover oh my gosh speaking of the art. Oh wait, what's the cover? I feel like I've only seen the pages. Have you, oh man, did I not see you the cover? Like here, I don't Ooh, know if you can see. Give it. me one second. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you can see it on my on my screen here, Scott. But oh my gosh, it's. I'm just gonna let you my react to it. Keyboard's f- frozen up. I'm, I need to type this no. in. No. Excellent. Of course, is what happened. Well, anyway, I'll I'll, I'll end up typing it in a second. It's well first and seeing. Let me see here. You've got you you keep looking. And I'll start to describe mm-hmm. if that's okay with you. It's it's just, no please for one thing, such a fantastic like it's got like an it, the background of the of the page looks like it, an old manuscript in and of itself. That's got so cool. the beautiful. This is the art that's on the front of this book is the same that's inside of the book. It's beautiful, and you've got so many uh, prequel Jedi. You've got Luke, old man Luke, right at the top. Um, it's just looking. I don't know. He, the look on his face is, is excellent. I love they've got him front and center. It's from his point of view. Um, this is just. I don't know. I love this. And then on either side. Ooh. You see it? This is nice. On either side of him, you've got Ray. You've got Ray on one side and Obi Wan Kenobi in his Clone Wars arm. Wow. Other side. What a choice to go with Obi Wan in his Clone Wars armor. Well, then they have Anakin next to Qui Gon, which I never would have thought about seeing them together. That's pretty it cool. It looks too. so good, and then I love they've got wow. it's like Empire Strikes Back Yoda down there. Yeah, with yeah, it is Mace Windu. We've got Shakti Sesetin, um, Luminara is in the background as well. well we got Kit Fisto. Um, who else we got here? Um, oh, we've got uh, uh, I can't believe it. I'm blanking on his name. I know everyone's name. I promise, guys. Ki Adi Mundi. Ki Adi Mundi, yes, yeah. Yes. Shout out to to I think Blue Harvest. I think they they love. Oh man, they love. They love. Big love. fans. Um, Big fans. But you know, this. This is gonna be a book, man. This cover. This is gonna be a. This, is, this cover makes me feel like we need to you know really check on the Wookies and make sure <laughs> it's going like make sure they're not getting wiped out by the droids. Man, it. it I've heard it's rough on. Kashyyyk it's pretty right rough. Now. It's pretty rough. And, I'm, I don't want to see the outcome of that, you know. I, I'm, you know, it, 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 Palpatine being so important and in charge of everything. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to see impo- the the implication of what might happen if the Wookiees lost. So well, wait, we got to send Yoda over there. We got to send it. We got to send him over there. But also, uh, speak of, back to D twenty three. What do you think? We, oh yeah. What do you think we're gonna get from Episode nine, Scott? That there's that tweet that went out by I forget who it was, but I, I retweeted it and I think everyone and their mother retweeted it. I think they and did. And it's like you don't know you like you you have no idea what's planned for D twenty three and it just had the the nine logo and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't I didn't expect anything for episode nine at all. Like I'm not ready for it. Well I'm not. If it's BTS I I'll, I'll be ready for it. But if it's anything more than BTS, I'm not ready. If it's at if all. it's more than BTS not ready. I will be I will explode because I don't I'm honestly the way it's gone. I am expecting a behind the scenes reel for sure. Of course, of expecting course. that sizzler reel and maybe some. We're, yep. we're going to get some cool of feature reveals. Yep, and we're going to get some cool, small things. Yeah, we're going to get small little like the, yeah. Hi, size. It's going to be just Hi, enough to hold us off until the next. Maybe yeah. we'll get some good Talk promo over. shots. Oh, you know, we, something. You know, what we might get are some cool uh, teaser posters. Okay, like. Oh, good character point. posters. Yes. Because TLJ, we got those cool, like, red and white themed posters. Yeah. White, that's a cool choice. Yeah. Great back then, but um, mm-hmm. they looked, they looked great. Uh, and that was horrible. They looked They looked, great. they looked like great. It. Wink, 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 wink. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but no. Ex- What's wrong with your eye? Uh, it's, uh, What's wrong with the Ewok eye? Well, I need to get my, my eyelids I need now. to get my eyelids removed. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, <laughs> so how did you just wink? Yeah, <laughs> we need to happens. get that surgery now. We need to get it. We need to get it. But you know, Stat. you know what else we need to do, Scott? What? You need to tell me what the bomb bad fact of the show is. The bomb sure, bad. Everyone, fact. I'm sure everyone is missing it from our uh, Lucasfilm adjacent episode. All righty, here we go. This is the bomb bad fact of the show. Um, now, picture yourself. The Force Awakens hasn't even come out I'm yet. I'm picturing. Think about that. I'm picturing. Picture it. Close your eyes. And, mental, oh, mental I, picture. I guess close your eyes while you can before we get those <laughs> eyelid, eyelids removed. Um, I will read it to you from the Wikipedia page. In late October of 2015, a Reddit user by the name of Lumpawaru, which I'm pretty sure is the name of Chewbacca's son, published a theory speculating that Binks was originally written as a major antagonist of the series. As Darth Jar 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 and a prominent collaborator with Palpatine before being redacted from the villain's role due to the character's initial and ongoing negative reception. The post quickly became viral and received significant media coverage internationally by independent bloggers and major news outlets like The Guardian, The Washington Post, The New York Times that included analysis of his actions in The Phantom Menace. Ahmed Best, who portrayed Jar Jar Binks in motion capture and voice, tweeted his thoughts on how it feels good when the truth comes out shortly after the theory gained widespread popularity. What? So, see, I remember someone speculating on this that Jar Jar was a villain the whole time because he gave Palps, you know, um, what's it called? Ultimate power or something? Yeah. No. Uh, what was the exact word? Well, um, uh, they gave him immediate power. Immediate power. Emergency power. Emergency powers, yes. yes. Um, you know, and gosh, have you, did you actually go and look at the Reddit thread too? Have you read that? It's insane. It's It's so well written. It's like, it's like someone is standing in front of, it's like the gif of, of Charlie Day, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy theory thing. It's, it's. Pepe Sylvia. It's, it's perfect. And like, and there's one part where it focuses on like a ancient Chinese style of fighting where you appear drunk. Drunken master. And you f- right. Yes. Yes. And you fight like Jar Jar took out like half the droids by what he was doing so clumsily. And like, it's, it's kind of interesting when you read into it. And I'd imagine, I don't know if that was Lucas's intention, but I mean, Jar Jar did kind of give Palps the, the vote he needed. And, Everything kind of fell into place after that for Palps. So I don't know. Well, you know, that was don't one know. of the main tenets this guy had, too, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly, was that the, the whole thing was Jar Jar was supposed to be revealed as, like, the dark Yoda. You know, yes. Like, the antithesis to Yoda. The, an- the antithesis oh, to Yoda. That's wild. Um, that, you know, it was Could you it was such an interesting read, and it was such it an was. interesting, crazy theory. Um, I have to say, I don't go for it, but I appreciated no, I the work that they put into it. It was well thought out. They even like all the stuff where he like did like the weird like editing where like they're uh, Obi-Wan and him, Obi-Wan and, and Jar Jar and Qui-Gon are about to jump down and rescue the queen and the pirates mm-hmm. from the droids. And they jump down and Jar Jar's like hanging there and then he falls down somewhat like on the complete opposite side of the bridge, they were saying. Yes. Probably an editing error, but still very like that. It's enough to make you go, wait a second, because the conspiracy theorist in me is like, hold on now. (laughs) So you're telling me this guy jumped 10 feet the opposite direction. Like exactly. uh, It's a lot to think about. Definitely interesting. So take it, take it all in. And if you haven't read the thread, go look up Lumpawaru's, uh, profile on reddit and give it a read it is interesting it's been a while since i've read it but i can tell you this much i'm reading into it and being a little convinced i was like this is this is insane but um, i remember being like you know torn well go, no go ahead sorry well, no no you know what else is insane I, this this trailer we got oh my god there's a trailer that dropped this week y'all and it was a trailer for the resistance the new show that they had put out just last year we're already coming to a close on it and we need to talk about it. Not season just the new trailer. Two. We need to talk about season one and what they established in season one. And how might season two follow suit? Yes. Yes, we do. We This is this is essential stuff, guys. We've got to talk about this because uh, I don't know how many of you... I know Resistance has kind of been uh, panned a little bit. Or not, not panned. It's a successful show. It's got a good... It movie. is. It's got Emmy nominations. It's got Emmy nominations, and it is, okay, 
It is. Let me okay, let me say this before I say the good thing. Of course. Resistance of the three main animated uh, programs that are canon that we have is probably my least favorite. That doesn't yes. mean it's not good. It's so good. No. And every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, I, I, there's little things you pick up on that a canon junkie like me and like everyone else is would just like eat it all up because there's of course. cool things from each era. But this is one of the most beautiful shows, the most it animated is. shows we've had. And I love the animation from from Clone Wars and Rebels. They each have their own unique styles, but this is this is gorgeous. It's like a beautiful. And it's a work of art. It's one thing I want to say too. If you think about it, we the fact that Clone Wars had the leverage of having characters we already knew very well yes. involved with them. That part's different. Rebels had characters we haven't met before, but in a in a time period we are very familiar with. Now, the one thing Resistance has done completely differently is taken characters we've never heard of, except for Poe and BB-8, only two, and Leia, kinda. Right. But Poe and BB-8, they're the only characters we've really got to know in the sequel trilogy, and having them be involved with the main character, and having an entire cast of new species, mostly, new um, new styles of characters, too, um, very unpredictable or predictable characters. Yeah. Um, it's, to me, Resistance is... You know, Rebels has the Force, Clone Wars has the Force and War. This one is entirely based on war and character-driven stories, which is something that people often forget. A lot of Clone Wars was very plot-driven, yeah. everything, like, you know, it was mission-based. And then Rebels is more kind of family-oriented, whereas right. Resistance feels like... Feel Resistance feels a little like you're watching Cheers. Yeah. You know, you've got these characters... <laughs> That's such a great that, comparison. That's such a great comparison. It, because cause you see... Uh, I you know, see. I can't think of a Cheers. Exactly. You got you've got um, you know, Niku, who is it was the same character each time. Yeager, always the same character. Um, you've got um is it Tora, yeah, Tora, always the same character. Kaz is always consistent. You've got these consistencies that then you see kind of trout a little bit, and um it's just something that's refreshing. No force. Yeah. And no point do they mention lightsabers, the force, they don't mention anything about Jedi, and they barely even bring up the Galactic Civil War. Well, they, they and, touch and, on the force with those children from Tahar. Oh, yeah, that's it. But, they do. But it's very tertiary, and it's kind of just like, yep. it's just enough for you to go, for to get the people who are really into the force to go, oh, yes. we're still in the same universe. Oh, yes. yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, funny enough you say that, it's it's... If you haven't had the opportunity to watch it, we're going to get into some spoilers today. So if you want, take a pause. Maybe don't finish this episode out till you're done with it. Yeah. Um, the reason why we're talking about it now is because the trailer dropped this week, and the trailer really has some spoilery stuff in it for the first season. For real, so yeah. Hopefully you didn't. Hopefully you didn't watch that that new teaser for it. But um, there's a lot of things that this first season did, and and I want to take a step back real quick. Um, because I didn't know you at the time all that well. I might have messaged you or chatted back with you once. But when right. this show was announced, I'm pretty sure it was in right after Rebels or right when Rebels it was, like, was ending. It was, yeah, it was coming to a close. It was like that May or something. Yes. Was ended. And I think they didn't even have a – I think they had one photo of it. And they announced that there's going to be a show about, you know, a star fight, not starfighters, uh, racers essentially yeah. called Star Wars Resistance. And I remember – being intrigued because it was the next animation, but it wasn't by Dave. It was produced, I think, written by Dave, but it was not directed. It was, uh, you know, I, a lot of right. it. Right, I think he helped create the characters. Yes, create the characters. That was it. And so far, it has been for me. It is the best start to any animation ever. This, this, the, the how it started and how this first season ended was the best that better than Clone Wars did it, and better than Rebels did it in regards to. Um, how it felt later because the beginning of the season yeah. was pretty childish and slow, but that's okay. It's, that's supposed to get you hooked on right. it. Um, where were you? How would you feel when it was announced, Jerry? Uh, well, I was excited because I wanted to explore that, that time period between it, yeah. so this was the beginning guys. This was the beginning of we're starting to get stuff of, like that happens between return of the Jedi and the force awakens. This mm -hmm. is the time period I am the most interested in right now. And and that's we're just at the beginning of it. We're about to get the Mandalorian. Um, yep. So I was I was excited. Um, you know, and they said it was 
kind of a, a, an anime influence. Don't don't hate me, guys. I'm not a big anime person. I don't. Neither I am don't I. disparage it, and and it, I see the value in the art and all that stuff. Just not, yeah. not for me. Um, but I absolutely do love this animation and all that stuff. And I just beautiful. I remember seeing BB-8 and being excited, like, yes, we're gonna get some. We're finally getting some sequel trilogy. Oh yeah, it was the B. It was the BB-8 logo. It was like it was the logo and BB-8 kind of peering in. Yep, yep. I remember that now. I just remember not knowing what to what we'd get from it. Really, I didn't know what the characters would be like. They didn't really go into that much detail as to who will be in it if it's going to be aliens or it's going to take place. Right. So it was kind of cool to speculate on it, and it was just called Resistance. You know, right? We knew it had to do something with the Resistance. It had a, had a very you know. Uh, very um, obvious name to it, but the one thing I did like was that that it was very highly discussed. And I remember when that first trailer dropped, which I thought I think it was in I was sick as a dog. I think it was last August. I think it was almost a year ago. Right now, just about. Uh, you're and, you're um, correct because I that's the first mm-hmm. video I ever did is Cannon Junkie. I feel like. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Check that out if you have history it. History in the is making. YouTube. There it is. Who would have thought? I got I got sweaty. Really, really sweaty. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Also, it I was my too. first video, so uh, yeah, go easy. Go easy, guys. Sorry. Well, one thing, funny thing enough, you say that. I remember I took screenshots like I just did for this first, this trailer we just, that just dropped. I took screenshots and posted them, and I got a lot of feedback. But at one time for that, when that first trailer dropped, I remember screenshotting the ship that looked like Kylo Ren's. I'm like, oh, we're going to get some Kylo Ren in here. We didn't. Of course, we didn't in this uh, this season that we just had. But um, we, of course, now, if you watch the trailer, we 100% get some Kylo Ren. Yeah. Man. So I remember speculating on how important is the First Order in this, you know, what is this going to do for our characters? And and it, it was kind of cool to see them set the pace. And, you know, after that first episode, I was pretty hooked. It, it's... It wasn't a normal Star Wars beginning, but that's okay. It didn't have to be. Um, you get to see some dogfighting stuff, and you get to see, you know, certain spaceships, and you see Poe Dameron interacting with a, di- a different character, and it's kind of, I know it's kind of a refreshing sight to see in regards to animation and, and how Star Wars approaches things, because it's not as, uh, not as on the nose. It's kind of like, you kind of have to keep up a little bit with it. Right. And, um, yeah, I'm... I, I know this much. After that first season, I'm I'm hooked. I can't wait to see where it goes. And I'm kind of sad it's going to end with this season. But it's sad, but... There's a lot to be discussed there. Well, yeah, what do you, what do you think about that, Scotty? Uh, what do you think? I think it was written that way. I, I honestly do, I really, too. I think it was written that way. I think what they're going to do is, with The Rise of Skywalker, when it ends, they're going to probably stop dwelling in the sequel trilogy. I think we're either going to go way back or go between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. I think there's a lot to be discovered there. And um, there's one thing I will say about Resistance, and I think you can agree with that, is that there's a lot of... It's very mutual as a show. A lot of people don't hate it. I don't see a lot of people praising it, which is fine, as long as it's not getting the disrespect it doesn't deserve. Right. But one thing it does better than most of these shows is it's there's no episode that feels wasted at all. There's no filler episodes. That's very which is true. Interesting. It, a lot of them feel like filler episodes, but they all end yeah, up. Everything they're not. matters in this show. Yes, uh, that was very yes. cool. I'll tell you, this show is at is firing at all cylinders, and and I was a hundred percent like it's the best show ever. Whenever the first order is involved, yes, episode, yes, and, it really and is. And I, I mean, I love the episodes without the first order too. They were great. They they made you fall in love with these characters first. Exactly. And they put them in danger. But my gosh, anything with the first and that's I'm just so excited that the second season is pretty much all weird. All first of mm-hmm. the first order. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I don't think I answered what you were talking about and stuff. I think no, it's okay. Way, but but gosh, you know, it's uh, nothing. There was absolutely. I'm trying to think of something that was like there were little kitty jokes here and there. That's it. But every. Thing, every plot point of each episode ended up factoring in uh, somehow towards the, the end. Bigger picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, or one thread and at least led to the next thread. To yes. That great finale. Yes. Had. What a finale, too. Oh, my I gosh. Mean, 
there's, I think, no other Star Wars animation. I mean, unless you think about how grand, you know, um, the ending was for Rebel Season 3 and 4 and 2. I mean, those are different things because it's more Jedi sensed. But for it to be just dogfighting and character conflicts and, I guess, on ground fighting, that was an incredible final two episodes yes. for. Uh, for resistance, and then leading into what we'll end up seeing in season two. But um, there's a couple things I want to go through, Jerry, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, we've got all these characters that were established that very new characters for Star Wars. Um, like for example, we got Yeager, Niku, um, Tam. We even got Poe Dameron back. We got Tora, Dozer, Pyre, um, Sonara, Tierney. I mean, like there's like people that. Like, for each episode, there's about five main characters. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. And, like, Kaz is generally the person that's followed. Yeah. Um, but... Well, not to mention all of I the... Wanna... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go with your point. No, 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 no. The one thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that there's other supporting characters yes. in the show that you end up... Yeah, exactly. That you end up falling even more in love with, you know, and... And you get to understand their point of view more. Like, Yeager, the first five episodes, I'm like, this dude's a jerk. I don't like this guy. He treats Kaz bad. He thinks he knows what he's talking about, but he doesn't. Until you get to the episode where you see that Yeager had a family. And he's doing this for a whole different reason than you thought. And he was a rebellion leader. And, like, he was a ex, I think it was X-Wing. He was one of well, the fire pilots. Yeah, at no, he was, he was like, it's, he, fought in, he fought in the Battle of Jakku. Exactly. Um, for sure. And I mean, I think he fought awesome. else before that. It was so such a good little... Also, if you remember, uh, before Galaxy's Edge opened up, we had that, like, all the concept art. And one of the picture of, of uh, Yeager and his family was, like, basically them photoshopped into... Oh, yeah. It was, like, the towers the of, from Galaxy's yes. Edge. That was yes. such a cool uh, so awesome. little Easter egg. So Super subtle Easter egg. It was very subtle. It was very good. But and how dark for this kids show that everyone was like, "This is too kitty and stuff." And then to have again, if we're going on spoilers, the fact that his brother was the one who was basically being reckless and ended up in yep. uh, Yeager's family in a crash. My it's wild. Wild show, guys, this show. It, don't sleep on. Don't it. sleep on it. I and that was my again. That was my other video I made for is this. Yeah. Do not. Uh, do not underestimate Star's resistance because it don't guys. Um, and okay, you were talking about like the background characters too, and w these characters. This is the show where not only are there interesting like uh, main and side characters, there are the interesting yeah. background characters. We 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 love there our own weirdos here. You guys know that. We do, and we there. I think but two of them were on our list. Were mistaken. they? Was it? Was one of them at least? Was oh, was the everyone's favorite Star Wars space janitor? Uh, everyone's sponge headed favorite. Uh, oh no no no! You know what it is? Uh, everyone's favorite uh, fry kid. <laughs> yes, you see Pablo. Yeah. That was amazing. And so now I'm like, well, we were joking about how O.P. Pit uh, was uh, a frig frigosian, which you're like a fr frigosian, yep. but I. Uh -huh. Now that I've seen his post, I think is it Frygosian? It's probably Frag. It might be Frygosian because they're, be. they're the Fry Kids, which I was like, oh, so clever. my childhood just so like blew up it's in the amazing. best way. Uh, so great. I love that. The next thing you know, guys, they're gonna have like someone based off a of grimace. I mean, come on, it's, it's yep. a matter of time. It's a, the next step. It's probably just Thanos, and so, but. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I love that little line. That anyway, anyway, yeah. um, one thing I thought was really cool, and I think everyone can agree to this that have watched the show, the fact that you get prequel era aliens, sequel era aliens, and original trilogy era aliens on the Colossus is fantastic. This it's a, a very, un, uh, I guess, something that's often overlooked. Yeah. I mean, you get all of them. Well, and it's so cool. We're not complaining. But this is what we wanted, Disney. This yes. is what we wanted. This is hashtag, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, this is what could have been, or whatever the hashtag was that they're, yes. um, you know, um, hashtag missed opportunities. That's the one. Um, that's it. But wait, Disney, missed Disney put this out. It was on Disney channel. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry. Um, you guys can uh, lodge all complaints with uh, Canon Junkie at the, at the Canon Junkie. I, I saw that. I changed you got my change. handle this to nice. at the Canon Junkie. So, uh, that's nice. Congrats on getting your handle to me. Uh, 
There you but go. Anyway, anyway, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Way to get your handle. You walk on. Thank you, thank you, John. Uh, but anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. What were we even talking about? Star Wars. No, Star no, the, 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 trilo- the, the fact you get the species, this, all three, all, all trilogy species. Yeah. This has been my only gripe with the new films, and I hate it because people, you know. It's true. I agree with pe- that, actually. People will, I, I've seen people throw that into the anti-TLG. Like, they'll, they'll be talking about anti-people who are against the Disney-era films, and they'll say, you don't have to have all the old aliens and stuff. We're not doing, and I'm, I'm not that way. I love all the new stuff we're getting, too. They're. Of course. We wouldn't have O.P. Pit if we didn't have The Force Awakens. O.P. Pit. Or Claude. And, and, and O.P. Pit, <laughs> the design for that, for Frigozian, uh, was revealed in the behind the scenes reel of The Force Awakens. So. It was. I remember that. Get you guys excited for what we're going to be getting. Uh, oh, next week, weekend. This weekend, Scotty. Ooh, Can you. I'm ready for oh, it. my body is. I'm mentally not ready for as it. As the gift goes. At all. Hugh, Hugh Ken, not ready for it. Hugh the gif of Ken Jong rubbing Vaseline yeah. on his chin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Love that. That's amazing. But um, there's a lot of things that happen in Resistance and a lot of character-driven moments like uh, Tora being, you know, I guess persuaded to join the first one. No, no, no uh, it's t- and, Tam, uh, not Tora. Oh, sorry I understand, I understand. Because Tam, Tam and Tora, it's like two T... I I understand. It's like weird. Tam Tora and Tierney. Yes, there's so many T names in this. There, it, it is. There was, um, gosh, and Tam was such an awesome character. Great character. Like fantastic. That whole thing with her, like I did not see it going. Like I, I mm-hmm. they were gonna go there. No, I did not either. And that was at all. The, this is the big spoiler of this season, guys. Uh, Tam joins the First Order. Yep. She she's Kaz's best friend basically at the beginning. She's Yeager. She sees Yeager as a father to her. She says mm-hmm. in in that she looks up to him. And then here she feels betrayed. She ends up going. It it's all a misunderstanding, which is ma- it makes it so tragic. It was that that's the best part and the so music tragic. is really good for that too oh it was it was and epic all the music the whole scene is great and i i but, actually um, found sorry i actually i will post the picture but i found anytime at celebration i saw someone dressed as a uh, uh resistance character i freaked out and mm-hmm. like get a picture with them if i could i only mm-hmm. was able to find one who i could stop in time because the rest of them were like were running away but but i got i found someone dressed as tam no way i didn't ever knew that she looked awesome i think i that's sick. I was hanging out with shout out to Gibby Scott Gibby, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think the you, boy, I think the you man. Were, you took the picture actually, but the best. It's either, it was either Scott or it was uh, Sean. Either one of the crew. It was one of the one of mm-hmm. one of the one crew. of the Star Wars Wolf Pack. The group text. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no, dude. Uh, I love I love Tam's character. Tam's a great what character. Are your thoughts on Tam's that arc, though. So. For me, um, I've this is our first time watching a transition happen like this. You know, as Star Wars fans, we've always we had you know Finn who was First Order, then joined you know Resistance. We've got um, even people like Biggs or Luke who wanted to join Empire but realized it wasn't the right place to be. So like for us to actually see someone who is part of who actually belonged to no one. That was the cool part of the whole show. She she would talk smack about the resistance and she'd be like, Well what's wrong with the first order being here? They're here to protect us. Right. So it was kinda cool to see those threads slowly planted and like seeded in throughout this entire um this whole first season. But for it to conclude the way it did, and it was a cool part because they had this character like Tyranny who's like, look, you you don't realize that but these people have been lying to you and and years actually an old rebel pilot. Like it's like she's like it's kinda cool because her whole conception of these whole I guess mindset of these characters actually ends up changing drastically by the end of this first season. Right. And it's by no fault of their own. It's just the truth. And these people were trying to avoid telling her the truth, whereas Niku didn't seem to really care. Um, <laughs> Tam, Tam really cared, and it and it shows. Yes. and that's that's most of her part apart for leaving. You know, did you? I'm sorry. Did you bring up the? Have we brought up yet that? Uh, 
her grandfather actually worked for the Empire? No, I've forgotten that that has not been mentioned yet. Or she, yeah, she, well, he, what was it? He built stuff for the Empire or something. He was like a, a factory worker or something, but he was like a willing participant. Or like, I've, I can't remember exactly what her grandfather did. You have to confuse yeah. me, guys. I'd have to go back and rewatch the whole season. But, uh, <laughs> the entire I thing. I need to, over. I need to. But, uh, <laughs> I do as well. I've only watched through it, I think, once or twice. And so I need to, I'm doing my canon rewatch. I'm right in the middle of Rebels right now. There you Rebels go. Season three. Um, I'm kind of doing it slowly a little bit here. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of stuff to, there's a lot of content to ingest these days. But, uh, there is. But no, um, just because remember they were talking about how bad the First Order is in the Empire. And she says, well, there were good people. She made a good point. She says, there were a lot of good people who. Yeah. They had good jobs with the Empire. They didn't do anything bad. They were, they were working hard. They loved their family and all that kind of thing. It's a good lesson for, especially in like, in, uh, it's a good lesson to learn, especially in politically charged times, not to get political. Of course. Anything, to remember no, that, but it makes that sense. we're all, we, we like to demonize people who don't agree with us. Yes. I mean, well, let's just, let's just talk Star Wars fandom in general. I, I you guys, I, you guys saw, I was kind of like dealing with some stuff this weekend about, about, uh, fandom and things like that. And maybe we need to do an episode yeah. on fandom sometime, but, uh. You know, uh, it's it's easy to just like demonize people, but to step back and realize exactly there's a person on the other end of this. It's feed. not there's a person over there, and I might not agree with them, but they st- yes. down deep down someone has to. They you have to be able to reach this rational person. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, let me get off my soapbox. That was just, no, no, it's a good soapbox to well, be on. So, I, I agree with everything you said. So deep so deep for this show that everyone was thinking was like just a weird, you know, kitty morning Kids. part. Yep. Yep. And there's a couple of things in here that I think funny resistance broadcast always brings it up. Their favorite moment for the whole show is when, is when, um, <laughs> is when, um, wow, I'm blanking on the main character's name. Kaz. Well, I don't know why this is Kaz. Yeah. Kaz, whenever, I guess Poe chimes in and is like, hey, buddy, how you doing? <laughs> and Kaz's like, what's up, Poe? You doing a gay? And all of a sudden, it's in the best like response ever. And Oscar Isaac, funny enough, does all the lines for this for this kid's cartoon. I, love I mean, it. like, that you is gotta a realize super it's, fan. That is, and that is so awesome that he does that anyway, because they could have got anyone to do it. Um, he was like, no, I'm actually talking to BB 8. That was for BB 8. <laughs> I was like, that's so great. Because it's just that character, and it makes sense. But that is no doubt. But, um, that is the funniest moment of the entire show. I it's so out well loud. It, it's so well written. It's amazing. Because it kind of pauses like that was. Maybe, well, yeah. they've set up so much with Kaz too, with how he's kind of awkward yes. and, sh- and like, yeah. clumsy and all that, and that Poe and the, you know, like everyone likes Kaz, but it's kind of like that whole trope where like he's you know he's kind of the odd man out, or he's not. Yeah. popular as he thinks he is and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That How many times has something like that like happened to you? Like, I had one time where, like, I was going into work, I was walking down this aisle, and some girl was working <laughs> at a station at the end of this aisle, and I don't know mm-hmm. who this person is. She uh-huh. waves, and I'm like, oh, maybe she recognizes me from work, and maybe she's just being friendly, so I just wave back. I turn uh-huh. around and realize that she's waving at a girl who's right <laughs> behind me, and I'm like, oh, gosh. This is great. I, I'm in my, thir- I'm j- I think I was just then turning 30 and I was like, I'm in my thirties and just had a high school moment. <laughs> That's super high and school. I still That's felt like, school too. I was like, I was like, oh, uh, just don't stuff me in a locker. So did you blink? Could you blink then or no? I did. I turned around, I turned around. And I was like, oh, you know, I just kind of made a funny, like, like, oh, sorry. I thought you were, and they laughed it off and stuff, you know, it was just funny. But that is that exact moment. Like, yeah. Uh, and then he, like, oh, it's time to BB-8. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, funny enough you say that, and, like, that's something we all go through. And, and Kaz is a good kind of Jar Jar-esque with the, with the slapstick falling over and stuff. And, you know, and nothing wrong with that. It's just that that's the part of the character. And I like that aspect of uh, Kaz as well. But um, one thing I want to get into that most – it's not really recognized and no show has done this before, but the inclusion of actual space pirates. Like, really – a reoccurring villain being space pirates. Right. And I think it's amazing that they do that. And they have a um, Sonara, which is one of the space pirates that end up getting a job on the Colossus who actually ends up kind of turning. She's like, well, wait a minute, you know, 
this is not such a bad place to be, and we don't need to attack these people. Right. Which is something I love. I love that. There's so many good, because so many good character arcs on this show. Everyone is. had a good arc. They did, and I will say my favorite character on this show is Sonora, hands down. She's she's Sonora's so great. interesting because she's she's like she was with these pi- these were this was the threat at the beginning. Of, yes, of it was. The show. Is we're worried about Craig and all these pirates. pirates coming in mm-hmm. and like taking over. And how great is their sail barge? So made cool. up of all multiple old, old ships. Wreck- Oh, it's so awesome. So good. Clever. Very clever. And uh, one thing I wanted to go into, um, of course, this whole entire first half of that of that season, the first season was like the, what did they call it? The, um, not the higher levels. They called it something. Uh, oh, the tower. The the tower. Yeah. And like, that's that first episode. Or you kind of see the tower. And it's kinda, yeah, yeah. Something. And that's where Doza is, Commander Doza. And like, that's the one character that I was like, iffy on because every other character kind of had their own ways but then you kind of see Doza from a different light when the Kaz goes into his closet and he ends up being a former imperial you know uh, officer and it's like what? That it just was, makes sense though uh, for that character. It was so mind blowing too and it was okay yeah. so then it, then you're like can we trust this guy? Or, exactly he, and then you got Yeager yeah. Rebel and then uh, the complete parallel Doza, you know, and he's a great leader. He hasn't let the Colossus get, you know, in too bad a shape. But it's just like you got two ends of the spectrum. And then at the very end of that first season, they end up working together. And you're like, this is just so cool to see this, you know. Um, I really like that about this, this that show. So it, it's great. kind of it kind of does some really good pairings you wouldn't think about, you know, otherwise. So, um, yeah, another another huge surprise, and I, I know you like this part, was the whole reveal of the Colossus not being an actual station in the water, it being a literal ship, right. a humongous old spaceship. Well, and I, I, a lot of people saw this kind of coming, and they, at least, this yeah. was like the, the scuttlebutt, I've said scuttlebutt like 50 times on this episode. You have. Shout I was out, impressed to use this many. Shout out to the Scarif Scuttlebutt podcast, <laughs> check those guys out, they're good, they're good buddies of ours too, so check Yes, they are. Oh, but, They're wonderful people. Uh, I have to wonderful go visit people. them on Scarif sometime because I really enjoy the beach. But uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but no, that was such an awesome. It was an awesome reveal too, and it was still like the the design of the Colossus. It kind of reminds of, yes uh, of Sky Strike Academy, and and I'm actually that's the episode I'm on on Rebels when uh, Sabine uh, goes undercover at Sky Strike Academy. Uh, to, Ooh, to get good Wedge point. and Hobby. I forgot about Sky. She gets yeah. Wedge and Hobby out. It looks like one of those kind of imperial uh, uh, kind of stations like that. Uh, it, it looking like Dryden's. It looked like Dryden Vought's. Dryden. It did look like. I'm yacht. getting Voss yes. and Yacht mixed up, so I'm calling it a Vought. <laughs> and I also know someone whose last name is Vought, and so now I'm just confused. Uh, but no. And Voss's yacht is like a bigger version of that too, which I, I love that kind of like straight up and down ship design. Oh, it was also it's so cool. It was also reminiscent of the uh, uh, Star Cruiser, uh, whatever the starship was that that uh, Obi Wan and Anakin were Satine's uh, Mandalore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That big tall thing that was that was so interesting too. Like such an interesting design to have it like go straight up and down. Um, something that big, so cool. And and what did you for, think about that though? Well, so I'm I'm a big fan of of any intricate or interesting designs like that, and um, it's kind of a cool approach for Star Wars because Star Wars has been exploring has always been like like airplane style space right. always right. literally since the dawn until we see Dryden Voss's ship in Solo, which is very unique. Um, and then until we see, like you said, uh, Satine's ship, and more in particular, this ship too. It looks like just like a big old floating guy with his arms out. You know, it looks yeah. and it flo- and it moves like this, and it's and it didn't quite launch out of the water like I thought. It was very interesting. It's not it's not quite what I expected, right. and like it's it makes sense too how it was placed in the water and how it could leave the water. But one thing that was really discussed and that the next season's going to have to deal with is the fact that. Um, this new base is going to have to find a home because they're running out of fuel. They're running out of yeah. all types of important resources, right. you know, and I'm so excited to see how that plays out with this next season because that, 
that was kind of a cool turn of events for that to become a ship. But you got to think about how it being a ship is way more than just being a ship. You know, right. now you've got a slew of people on it that were not supposed to leave that planet now floating through space. It's just like there's so much weight on these character shoulders that was not there at all in the first season. Right. So that's going to be really cool. And they're stuck in the middle of the battle with the, the first order. Yeah. I mean, like, that's huge. Gosh. Humongous. How action packed was that trailer? And it, it, it gosh. Very action packed. A lot of times with these trailers, they'll show you, like, basically two episodes worth of. Things. Yes. Um, but there's so much varying, like, things going on. There, It looks like this is going to be a very action packed beginning of season two. This is just the beginning of season two, and it looks this epic. And Rin yes. shows up. They usually don't show us anything from the second half. No. So how no. crazy is that Kylo is showing up the first? He's gonna be. It's gotta be the end. I don't know how much. His, I don't know how much. How, it's probably gonna be the end of that I season. But I don't is. know how much. How big of a player he's gonna be. But I have a gut feeling that when so this first part of the season will end in December when Rise of Skywalker comes yeah. out. And Jerry and I had talked about this in private. But come January when it kicks back up, we already know what happens to Rise of Skywalker. I think this this show's gonna get a little off. You know. I think it's going to go a little crazy with what might happen Gosh. because the sequel trilogy is over yeah. at that point. And they're going to – of course, I'm happy they're concluding it. But I think it's going to conclude in a much bigger way than we expect. Yeah. Much bigger. Well, I can tell you I, I can tell you a little, about, a little bit about the first episode with no spoilers. Yes, please, Jerry. Um, Jer- let me tell you – let me fill you all in. Jerry had the wonderful experience of seeing the first episode at Celebration. So – uh, who are you with? You with Scott? Uh, me Gibson? and Scotty, Scott Gibby, man. Uh, yep. We we he yep. actually had never seen the show before that too, and that episode really made him want to like go and uh, check out the rest of it. And so, that, just yes. so you know, it, this is it, it was it was top tier of uh, resistance. Like it's not a fully action packed episode. They don't stay fully mm-hmm. action packed. Don't they gotta throw this? They gotta plant the seeds. But man. they it is interesting, and it's such a cool. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say, it takes place in in space. If you remember, That's at awesome. the end of the season, uh, Niku says, "You know, I didn't get all the coordinates typed in, so they're not going to Dakar." He's like, "We're either going to be somewhere close to Dakar or somewhere light years, <laughs> unfathomably light years away." And yes, so it's so awesome. They, they were like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess we're going wherever we can together." Yeah, but they end. They're they're in space. They're kind of having trouble again with the power and all that. And it it turns into a little bit. It almost it has homages, honestly, to uh, uh, Alien. Really, surprisingly, no, nice. don't expect a dark episode. No, it has no. cool kind of like homages to that kind of stuff, like kind of like space horror. There's a lot of like darkened hallways that they're mm-hmm. floating through and stuff like there's Oh, that's awesome. It's cool to see them with the backdrop of space, too, instead yeah. of, like, on – you were Water. being on the planet and all that. We're uh-huh. going to get so much variety in this season, and I'm so- – Oh, that's going to be awesome. But seriously, you guys need to – gosh, just get psyched because this is going to be – it's going to be a great season, and I'm so excited for it. And, Scott, let me ask you. Uh, yeah. We're talking about this – First half of the season, I believe, is going. I I think it happens immediately after, or we're we're at the end of Force Awakens. We're probably going to start right at the beginning of ha- the Last Jedi is going to be happening concurrently. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be at the end of Last Jedi by the time the first yes. half of the season is over, and we could have the build up of in between the war, of course, between uh, Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, the last well, half, and up to the end of the war. Which is imagine that. Well, I was thinking of this at one point when you were saying, you know, them floating through space. I thought about what if Niku, like, actually sent them to the Unknown Regions or somewhere up the oh. like, and they run in, they run into the, the Sith Troopers or something oh crazy. You know what I mean? Like, what if what if they run into Chiss or they run into the, the Grisk or oh those people gosh. that, like, were residing, you know? Well, like, that might not be this first half of the show, but the next half, they could find something. the way in dealing with the Chiss Ascendancy. Yeah. And this could be tying into, I haven't finished Thrawn Treason, but somehow could tie into Thrawn Treason. Maybe maybe they end up finding Kanan, or not Kanan, they end up finding Ezra. I don't know. Like, there really could, 
they there could be some very interesting things left open ended at the end of Resistance. Absolutely, that could then be touched on later. So I I just have a feeling that we're gonna get with the not not this first half is gonna be there's gonna be some pretty shocking things that happen. Like the bounty hunter inclusion, I thought that was really oh, that was really the clever. The crimson Corsair that was really nice. is Sidon yes. Asano. Oh, and then beautiful. and then the the, 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 the battle, super battle droids. Oh, that was nice. That, I didn't catch that, that nice. on the first thing until you sent it to me. I was like, oh my gosh, those are super B. Those are super. That yes, yes. Those are B two. So, holy cow, B two. Oh yep. man, I was I'm I'm excited for that, and I have a feeling it's gonna be. A little bit more action packed than the whole last season was. I think these. I think each episode is going to be pretty deliver a lot, I agree. and I don't think they confirmed how many episodes it's going to be. But I imagine it's going to be a lot. Like I think it was twenty two or something. It was. For... It was around there. I think it was about eighteen, maybe. Okay, eighteen. Okay, okay. Shorter season, which is what so we. Nine, that's what we get now. Nine. That's, that makes sense. That's what we get these days. That makes sense. Uh, it's kind of shorter seasons, but but they usually pack more story into it. But they might do more episodes because this is a 20-minute show. It's 20 episodes. Mm-hmm. But, gosh, mm-hmm. I'm excited for the fact that they're exploring the problem everyone has with the sequel trilogy. What is the threat of the first order? They blew up one planet. Uh, we. What is the go. state of the galaxy? Are yes. addressing it in this trailer. If you have this complaint, watch this show. You nice. should. Don't sleep Give on it. Give it a chance. Just like these extra canon materials. If you are a Star Wars fan, try to make some time. If you're really invested, you really want to know, go for it, man. Try. And you don't have to read or anything. You don't have to listen to anything. You don't have to keep up with anything in a video game. You literally can just put it on and watch yeah. it. And I will say, I'm going to be 100% honest, those first couple episodes are kind of a drag. And I have friends that still can't get through the season because those first couple episodes just hold out. Kind of like Clone Wars. That first season of Clone Wars, that's a drag. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is a drag. It, yeah. You had to get through it. Had to get through it. But Rebels, it started off pretty good. Well, Resistance is the first to me that has done it to where – that first season, you're like, man, this has actually got way bigger stakes than any other animated series has. Yeah. So, um, well, resistance. Don't sleep on no. it, y'all. We're resistance season one, if I if I may. It it is the only one that I've ever felt this way on. It is hard to watch week to week. Yes. If you're not into yes, it. that's true. But it is an easy binge. It is an easy binge. Because the episodes are so fast, they go just so just put it on. Maybe scroll Twitter for the first few episodes, and then. I promise you're going to get hooked by some, but also don't scroll Twitter because there's little look for stuff in the background. If you have to. Yes, there is a lot of there's clone subtle Easter there eggs. Are clo- there's like clone wars. Uh, uh, there's clone uh, version one uh, mm-hmm. helmets helmets. And like there yeah. are, you can see like, gosh, there's, there's so many things. Tra- Scout there's, trooper helmets yeah. on the pirates. This little stuff. Just, just Honestly, guys, stuff. check it. This show is it, do not sleep on it. It is it's quality, quality stuff, and it is only getting better. And Scott, if I may ask you a question, of course, maybe, maybe we could wrap up our. I don't know if you if you have any more points. That's fine. But no, I, I said what I wanted to say. Let's wrap up this discussion on this. Maybe are uh-huh. the chances you think of us seeing in Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. The Colossus or the Fireball, just I like think... Rogue One style with uh, the ghost. Ooh, good point. I honestly think we are going to see before that a BB character, like um, like a uh, who's is it? CB twenty three. CB twenty three. Yeah, exactly. I think we're going to see a BB a BB style droid. I think we're going to end up seeing maybe a ship. That'd be awesome. Um, I think we might end up seeing someone like Niku in the background. Oh, I don't know if we'll possibly. get straight up get Kaz. No. Right, or we'll get straight up get Doza or, or Yeager. Um, I honestly think the old dogs, and this sounds unfortunate, the old dogs, I think Yeager and Doza, they're done for. I really do think. I, I 100% think they're going to be like the emotional ending you know, to this show. The I fact that we that. lost those two, these two older characters of a different time. You know? I can see that, and, but uh, also how dare you. Yeah, it's gonna be heroic. It's gonna be heroic, though. I know. It's gonna be heroic, but I have a soft spot but, in my um, heart for dads, though. 
That's a but that's a great comment you make to think well, where could we see these characters again? I um yeah I think we're gonna get something very subtle in, in episode nine. I think so too. Um, I think we're getting a space battle. Subtle. I think we're getting a space battle, and I think we're gonna see the Colossus or yeah something like because they we're gonna I think we're gonna see a patchwork army guys. I think. Oh, that's going to be and awesome. And there's a comic series coming out that I'm excited to read, too, uh, where they're going to talk to the Mon, Cal- the Mon Cala people uh, to get more Mon Cal warships and stuff, which is... Oh, that's so awesome. You're going to see more of those, but I think we're going to see just patchwork, like, weird ships. Yes. So, totally. Um, but anyway. Totally. I, gosh, there's there's so much... It's going to be yeah, good. It's, it's going to be gonna good. It's going to be but, awesome. Um, the thing look, is, gang. do not sleep on it. Exactly, and I, uh, that's something that I, I hope everyone who listens to this, and if you happen to get the whole thing, we spoil it for you. That's okay. Hopefully, you can sit through it and really enjoy it and take it in more now. But um, we're happy that you joined us for the discussion. You know, uh, resistance. We will see you very soon, if I'm not mistaken. When they say October, something very co- closer than that, maybe I don't remember. Did they even say a date? Uh, October fourth. I believe. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. No, no, no. October fourth is when they are. Is the October fourth is uh, when they are doing Triple Force Friday. Ah, can't it wait for that. It drops on the sixth. It's the sun. The Triple sixth. Triple Force Friday. Wow. We're, wow. Sadly, we're not getting any more merch for this season. At least yet, we're not getting any. Yet, as of, as of what we know. Mm-hmm. But don't don't guys don't fret. Don't. Be yelling at Lucasfilm of all this stuff. That it'll be okay. I mean, you know, voice if you want. Show them we want the merch. Of course, show, of course. If you want more stuff like this, you gotta, guys, you gotta watch it. Um, but yeah, man, uh, be ready. That's gonna be a big weekend too. It's gonna be big. I, I be think huge. I'm actually gonna be in Nashville that weekend. Oh, nice. My lovely wife. There, there's a, a convention that she's going to that. Uh, I'm going to be kind of hanging out. I'm probably going to that Friday, go to like some stores and like find a target, check out yes. the, you know, the merch and all the fantastic things and all the stuff. So I'll, maybe I'll post stuff about my adventures there, but, but that's excellent a few months away guys. So, um, but no, man. Yeah. So be on the lookout, October 6th, star Wars resistance, the epic final conclusion. Uh, yep. The final, don't Final conclusion it. is an oxymoron, but that's okay because yeah. And hopefully, we'll um once it's over, it'll all be on Disney Plus. So that's something else you can look Absolutely. forward to. Absolutely. But uh, anyway, Jerry, great discussion, great time. I hope everyone else enjoyed it. Um, what's one thing the audience should remember to do besides, of course, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts to help give those poor Snoke babies. Oh. And Snoke baby. And, and, All I'm and picturing is the Muppet Babies theme removed. song now. Yes, and I'm picturing Jared with no eye no eyelids. <laughs> we have like we wicked. have Snokes that need their eyelids removed. Or wait, no, I'm getting. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, but yeah, go. Motorola guys, Raylos. We've got our, our adopt a Snoke campaign. Go to our yes. podcast, rate and review, leave your Twitter handle. So we. The Snokes can see who's saying, yes, you know, these certain absolutely. things. Absolutely. And also, hey, guys, yeah. we're, we're asking you for some feedback on there, but also, um, uh, we didn't get a lot of feedback from you guys. Did you like our last, uh, uh, yeah, let us did know. Did you like our last episode? Let us know. Come on, like, DM, DM us. us, do it. We're, we, Whatever. Open, you know, like, let us know. Come and talk to us. We are, we are an open, uh, powwow of Star Wars we are. and Indiana Jones and other things to be had. So come let us know. If you'd like to hear more of that stuff, let us know. Let us know what you'd like to hear about. Um, but also, of we'll course. See. Scotty, where can the good people follow you? On the- They can follow me on the Twitter at the Scott Jero. Scotty Jero is what you can call me. Um, go find us, our YouTube page. We have got our uh, fantastic reaction video Crushing in it. celebration at, at in Chicago for celebration. Great video. Crushing got it. 800 views right now. Get it. Let's get 8 million yeah, views man. by tomorrow. Come on, guys. Do, do it. it. Bomb bad but, fan. Um, you can do it. We believe in you, baby. I don't um, know why I always call you baby birds, but I do. Baby birds, yeah. The baby gungans. Baby birds. The baby sperm Baby gungans. birds need some baby snacks. <laughs> Snoke babies, they make dreams come Ooh. true. Hey, that's just for you guys. You're welcome. 
Dang. That he can meet, dude. He can meet Kermit like he comes in, like Kermit comes in too. And he's like, oh, mm. uh, gee, Snoke. Uh, uh. Anyway. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't always have to be so mean. You don't always have to be so uh, mad. Why, why do you um, always talk about bridging our minds? It's kind of weird. Bridging our minds. Look, let's bridge the ending to this show. Jerry, <laughs> where can they find Guys, you? Guys, you can follow me at my brand spanking new Twitter handle at <gasps> the Cannon Junkie. What? Cannon Junkie. I'm, How did he do it's, it? It's one of those magical, the magic of going into your settings and How typing in it? stuff until you find one that works. So. Uh, and he did. I did. I did it. I did it, guys. It's super easy. But follow me. I'm Cannon Junkie at the Cannon Junkie, Jerry, and I am always giving you the Star Wars hot takes and talking about my life and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, follow me if you enjoy my ramblings. Well, you know what we should do, Jerry. You know what you should what do. Should- you should do your job right now. <laughs> what should I do? Well, you know what, Scott. I know what our. Uh, I know what the Bombad Fam should do. What should they do? You should go uh, rate and review this podcast on <laughs> Apple Podcasts so you can give those poor lost little sons. But you should also stay a bombad. Saturday Night Live. Live from New York. It's Bombad Night. Live from Live. Coruscant. It's Bomb that night! Oh. Back to dinner! Oh, jeez! Scotty Jarrow! Jerry Campbell! Half off snow, it's quarter off snow. Just snow! Joseph Snow. <laughs> Joseph. James Arthur Bainey. <laughs> <laughs> John, John Paul Jones. Let me, John Paul My Jones. My name is John Paul Jones. My friends call me John Paul Jones. So you can call me John Paul Jones. That's that's a little collider live for you. Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, we can, we can, oh, is we it? can stop recording now. Because that's... Now we're, right. now we're just evolving into talking about other, what other podcasts talk about. <laughs>